from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Hi everyone, Paul Gillen with another CUBE interview. In this, uh, in this episode we're going to be talking about Comtrade Software, a company that I'm guessing a lot of you never heard of, but it's a pretty big company that you've never heard of, breaking into the U.S. market now and breaking in an unusual location, Boston, setting up headquarters in the city of Boston. And that may have something to do with the background of my guest, uh, Simon Taylor. Simon is the president of Comtrade Software, uh, which is an end user monitoring and infrastructure management company. Uh, he has uh, got in charge of the overall vision, the strategy, really breaking into this country and making a, a, a name for the company uh, on the U.S. shores. Not that they don't already have a presence here, as, as we'll find out. Tell us first of all, uh, first of all, welcome Simon, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Tell us about Comtrade. Sure, you know, Comtrade is actually a 25 year old business. Uh, we've got about 2,000 employees worldwide. Uh, and we actually began as, uh, I think many Silicon Valley style companies began here in the US with uh, a couple of folks who left a very large, well-known uh, software company and decided to make it on their own. So they went, set up their garage, they uh, began building uh, data protection products and monitoring products. Uh, the difference is that this garage was actually in Slovenia. It was not in Silicon Valley, it was not in Boston, it was not in the US. Um, and they grew it. They began growing this, uh, this software business. It was eventually acquired by a larger company called Comtrade Group. Uh, and Comtrade now focuses on end user monitoring and infrastructure management. Um, and we began, uh, I think about five years ago, uh, migrating ourselves away from being a services business where we had been very, very focused on building products for other companies. And we started to say, let's go into the software company business. Let's actually take all this expertise in monitoring and data protection. Let's start building our own products and moving up the value chain. And we did. Uh, and we started to do that by building SCOM packs that connected Microsoft System Center Operations Manager to Citrix. Uh, did very well there, had a couple thousand customers. Citrix came along and acquired that part of the business uh, in January of this year. And so what's, what remains at this point? Yeah, sure. Uh, the company's still very large, actually. So we still ha we've kept all of our engineers. So we've got over a thousand software engineers, uh, and we've broken the business up into two parts. You've got Comtrade Digital Services that does outsourcing and services work on a global scale, and Comtrade Software. And Comtrade Software is really focused on the hyperconverged market. So we looked at you know all of our expertise, and we said the two things we do really well are backup and monitoring. And when we looked at the marketplace, we said, what's really hot right now? If we're going to continue to build products and continue to stay up the value chain as a product software company, uh, where do we think we can really make a dent? And what we really like uh, is the hyperconverged industry. We see that this sort of concept of decluttering the data center, reducing complexity, uh, these are things that are essential today. You know, I always tell people there's, uh, there's this, this paradigm, right, which is about data loss. Uh, and you know, there's over $2 trillion a year that's lost because of data. That is actually a cost, the equivalent the size of the GDP of Brazil. What do you mean lost because of data? So think of the average company, think of an insurance company or a hospital that suddenly has a, a data backup problem or a monitoring problem. Uh, they lose an entire day's work. They lose even an hour's work in some cases. All of that can be translated into actual monetary loss for a company. You know, it means more man hours to actually get things up and running again. It means data input loss. It means potentially customer service records, compliance issues. People have actually aggregated all those costs and said that that's equivalent to a $2 trillion loss annually. Uh, and we love the fact that at Comtrade Software, we're work working on that big problem. We're working on solving that problem as a part of the hyperconverged industry. Well, I'm interested by your origins in Slovenia. Uh, I, I would guess that most Americans couldn't even tell you where Slovenia was on a map. Uh, <laughs> we know that a lot of software is developed in Eastern Euro European countries, but we don't hear a lot about companies that are actually based there. Uh, what advantages does being in Slovenia have for Comtrade Software? Mm, great question. Y and you're absolutely right. I think Slovenia is a country with two million people, right? Many people have not heard of it. But the reality is that Slovenia is a country that has an amazing background in science and math. Um, I always like to say that you know, if you're a politician, you'd love to work there, because everyone here is trying to promote STEM, right? Science, technology, education, and math. Mm -hmm. This is a country where the average student does calculus in the eighth or ninth grade, right? So the, these guys are very, very focused on science, very focused on math. And in fact, if you even go out to the average person and you say, you know, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or what do you want your kids to be when they grow up? the number one answer is going to be an engineer. 
being an engineer there is equivalent to being a doctor or a lawyer here in Boston. Uh, and I think that's an amazing thing. It's an amazing place and it creates a culture uh, in which building technology is really part and parcel of what you want to do when you grow up. So talk about the game plan. First of all, why you? Why were you selected to lead the, the charge coming into the U.S.? Yeah, sure. So I actually began at Comptry about 10 years ago. I, I was running a small startup out of Prague, uh, and I was helping Central and Eastern European companies to build go-to-market strategies that would allow them to enter the U.S. market. Uh, I met the founder of Comtrade, uh, Veselin Yevrosimovic, and uh, he and I sat down and began ha having this conversation about how we'd built this amazing, thriving, you know, multiple hundred million dollar business in Eastern Europe. Uh, and he now wanted to get into the U.S. market. And the first thing I said to him was, it's going to be really hard. You know, uh, there are some rankings that actually indicate that the U.S. market is harder than Azerbaijan to break into. So, so I have no idea how hard Azerbaijan <laughs> is to break into. I guess it's pretty <laughs> no difficult. No frame of reference. Right. But if you think about a country with 2 million people like Slovenia, and you think about a country with 350 million people like the U.S., just building a brand can be a really daunting task. Uh, and what, what I really discussed in that conversation was the need to be incredibly focused with what we do. The need to not just sort of go into the U.S. market and say, hey, we're another software company or another tech company, but to be able to say, we're the best in the world at something. Uh, and for us, those two things were back up and monitoring. And you've targeted the Microsoft environment specifically, and now the hyper-converged market. Uh, why do you think there is such a big opportunity in hyper-converged? Well, in one word, Nutanix. Um, I think when we looked at you know, the entire sort of storage space and we looked at what everybody was sort of doing, we said, look, there's a real need for monitoring this industry at a, at a higher level. Uh, and the hyper-converged industry is kind of where it's at because you're starting to actually take things out of the data center, not keep putting things back in. So by consolidating around a platform like Nutanix, you're able to simplify your data center, avoid data loss, and reduce costs. We love that. Um, and so it, it stood to reason that we had to find, you know, one really strong company that we could start to monitor. We looked at all of the sort of various different players, and there's many of them in the hyper-converged space, and many of them build wonderful products. But what we specifically liked about Nutanix was this concept of enterprise cloud. We really saw that DRAJ and the executive team had a true vision for how they wanted to extend hyper-converged uh, and really help to create a paradigm shift, really be disruptive in the data center industry. Uh, and we're proud to be a part of that by offering monitoring products that will allow you to actually monitor end-to-end -end, uh, the entire Nutanix environment. Is this strictly Nutanix, or do you piggyback onto other management systems as well? So what we actually do is we build uh, plugins that will connect you to Nutanix and your, uh, really whatever platform you're working on. Um, right now, we've, we've got a wonderful product for Microsoft System Center Operations uh, Center, so SCOM that connects SCOM into Nutanix, does all the end user monitoring and all the infrastructure management. You're going to see a number of other product releases coming out shortly. Uh, but one of the things we've done is we've actually created what we call a super pack. So what a super pack is, is we create, for the first time, real single pane of glass monitoring. And the way we do it is we say, OK, so you want to monitor uh, your Nutanix environment, and you want to see the way that that correlates to the exchange workload. Well, now you can. So what we do is we actually integrate the management packs from Exchange and the management packs from Nutanix that we built, and we create one single dashboard that runs all the correlation analysis and lets you see the impact that Nutanix is having on Exchange and vice versa. Uh, you're entering the U.S. market at a time when the software market is really changing pretty dramatically. We're moving away from you know, the old traditional direct sales uh, force <laughs> uh, market. We now have marketplaces or a, a primary way of, uh, of uh, distributing. And, and marketing software, uh, try before you buy, uh, open source. I mean, a lot of the dynamics of software are changing. How ha are you uh, are you f tuning your sales strategy to take advantage of those shifts? Yeah, sure, it's a great question. And it's a difficult one, right? Because at the end of the day, I think the, the world has become very used to shopping in a certain sort of way. Uh, and that's consumerized. Um, enterprise software sales was always one very specific sort of mode of, mode of, of uh, operating. Uh, but when you looked at the way people were buying things at home, it was entirely different. Well, obviously with the ra rise of technology, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, people now want to buy things fast. They want you know, speed. And I think that's what's given rise to those marketplaces. I think I when you're building monitoring or you're building data protection or you're building infrastructure management software in general, uh, I think you have to be aware of both. You know, so what we try to do is make sure that we leverage uh, platform marketplaces like Microsoft, Pinpoint, and others, uh, but at the same time, 
have a sales team that is very, very channel conscious. I think one of the things that continues to be incredibly strong in our industry is the channel. So, you know, we work with Ingram Micro here in the States. We work with a number of distributors in Europe. And we have over 100 channel partners selling our products. Uh, and we believe that that really is the secret sauce, to enable a channel play and then integrate your channel play with, with uh, these different marketplaces that the vendors provide. Is this an on-premise sale or, or do you have a SaaS option as well? So we do both. Uh, it's primarily a perpetual license. Uh, however, we do offer a rental model. And we do that predominantly for multi-tenant uh, managed service providers who want to stand up you know, some Nutanix monitoring and make it available to a whole bevy of different customers. And uh, how important is the relationship with, with Nutanix to your success in this market? I would say incredibly important. I think that, you know, again, Nutanix is such a wonderful company to work with. Uh, their Elevate Partner program is exceptional. Uh, they work very hard to make sure that there's a number of different marketing tools that are available to partners like us. But I think they're also incredibly uh, focused on building their ecosystem, and that makes them more fun to work with. Uh, so, so when you go into a meeting with Nutanix, ideas are thrown freely on the table. People want to engage. They want to help your product to succeed. Uh, and we believe that by supporting the Nutanix economy uh, and helping to become a part of that ecosystem, uh, we're hopefully doing, uh, creating some value for them as well. Where do you see the hyper-converged hyper market growing? Is this going to be a, a hyper-growth market for uh, the foreseeable future? I think so. Uh, I think that you're seeing a lot of the big, the big sort of blue chips jumping on the bandwagon. They're coming out with a lot of their own products. I think always the challenge with the blue chips is that they have a lot of legacy technology, and there's an internal need to sort of consolidate a, a lot of that uh, to create new solutions. The great thing about that Nutanix has done is they've really gone from the ground up. They've built some very, very powerful software, uh, and they're leveraging that software not just to declutter the data center and simplify it, I think they're also using that software to create a true enterprise cloud experience, uh, an experience that gives people a real option for having a cloud that they can control and they can manage. So the management component of that is where Comfrey comes in, you know, offering that end-to-end end-user -end monitoring and infrastructure management and allowing you to uh, develop a very clear visibility inside Nutanix. That's what we do. You also say that you're a data protection company. What's the data protection side of the business? Yeah, it's a great question. So, so, so uh, I, I told you before that Comtrade's in the middle of an evolution. We, we're evolving from being a services company to being a products company. And I told you before that we really focus on backup and monitoring because those are the two things we do really well. Our products right now are monitoring products. But I can tell you that from a services perspective, over the last 25 years, we have done a tremendous amount of work in the data protection, backup, and recovery space. So when we look at sort of our skill set and where we really are uh, true leaders, I would say, in this industry, you're looking at backup recovery and monitoring end to end. What, uh, and as you, as you move into this market, you start to build out your beachhead. First of all, you're not just in Boston, you have operations in other parts of the country as well, correct? That's right, so we actually have an office in LA, we have an office in uh, uh, Silicon Valley, and we also have another office in Chicago. These are primarily sales offices? Yeah, these are sales offices, but we're actually staffing up across the country. We're starting to have product managers and systems engineers, even some architects. Uh, but when you've got a thousand software engineers located in Slovenia who are really, really top class, uh, I think that you really want to make sure that though that's where the focus is from an engineering perspective. Does that give you an advantage? I mean, you mentioned earlier about the Slovenian uh, culture being very engineering centric. Does having uh, the the cost structure of Slovenia uh, are there are there other advantages to having uh, to having people over there? Yes, I, I, there absolutely are. I mean, I think from a cost perspective, uh, it is certainly it more inexpensive uh, to hire developers there especially compared to Silicon Valley, right. never, never mind uh, anywhere else. Uh, I think that the, on the West Coast, things have really skyrocketed. Um, so I think having that sort of, you know, quote, quote unquote, offshore component uh, to our engineering absolutely allows us to do things at a lower cost. That said, I think the real value is that you've got really hungry people who are really, really excited about the work that they're doing. So for us, it's not just about cost, it's about where are the world's best backup recovery and monitoring engineers. Uh, and I would argue that it would be almost impossible to build a company in the U.S. today in this one specific city with a thousand engineers who are incredibly good at backup recovery and monitoring. Yeah, and of course, uh, turnover is a huge issue, and particularly in Silicon Valley area. I would assume that you don't have as big a problem in Slovenia. We have a 95% retention rate of the company. A uh, little shout out to our HR department, they do a wonderful job at that, but I think it is also a clear part of the culture. 
Um, this is a company that, you know, when you go to Slovenia, if you do ever go, you should check it out. It's beautiful. It looks like a mini Switzerland. Ah. Uh, but uh, when you go, Comtrade has a huge brand there. We're one of the top places to work. Uh, if you just do the math, 2 million people in Slovenia, about 2,000 people working at Comtrade. It's 1%. Point one if you extrapolate that to a three hundred and fifty million dollar, three hundred and fifty million uh, person country like the U.S., you're talking hundreds of thousands of people. Exactly. Um, so, so I think we we actually play a significant role in shaping the technology industry in that part. Why of the world. Boston? Why did you come into the, through this city? Sure. You know, we we did the obvious thing. We looked at Silicon Valley, um, and I think that a lot of people do that. They start there and they sort of say, "This is where technology is." But I think when you really look at the uh, cultural makeup of Silicon Valley versus Boston, I would argue that if a European company wants to enter the U.S. market, they do it through Boston. Don't do it through the West Coast. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that simple time zone, right? Um, if you're on the West Coast, you've got that extra three hours. Mm -hmm. That means you're nine hours apart from your counterparts in Europe. Here we're six, so we can do a lot of work on the same business day. Right. Very critical. Second. It sounds silly, airplane rides. You know, to go an extra six hours by plane means that consequently people are more tired when they arrive. You can't have the same level of communication uh, and people are not going to visit as much. And we really want to have one company, not a different company per country. Uh, and I think Boston allows you to do that. It creates a very nice bridge between Europe uh, and, uh, and the US. But I would say the last reason is that from a cultural perspective, Boston's about winning. I think Boston is, has a culture of success. Boston has a culture in which people want to build a company and they want to succeed at it. Uh, and I think that that is uh, different than Silicon Valley. I think that Silicon Valley has a startup culture and it's a thriving startup culture and there's a huge place for that. But if you're a well-established company that doesn't need VC funding, that's entirely self-funded, that's been around for 25 years, has a couple thousand employees and you want to enter the US market, you want to enter an establishment. You want to enter an establishment that understands technology, has access to amazing talent, uh, and is easy to reach. And for that reason, I would say Boston's the right pick. Fantastic, fantastic uh, rationale. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up uh, your first year as a U.S. Uh, in the U.S. What's ahead for the second year? <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of surprises in store for 2017 for our customer base and for our prospect base. Um, I think one thing that I will say right off the top is you're going to see a continued commitment to Nutanix. You're going to see a continued commitment to hyperconverged. Uh, you're going to see six to ten new products rolled out, uh, and you're going to see, I think, us become hopefully the one-stop shop for monitoring uh, of Nutanix uh, and a few other surprises as well. No, we hope, hope you won't be a stranger. Drop by the Cube anytime. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us, Simon. Thank you. I'm Paul Gillen. This is the Cube. <laughs>